Well, Thunder Bay, you spoke and we heard you loud and clear. Uh, you want to hear from Jean-Paul de Rover, and we have him right here. Hi. Raise the roof, everyone. <laughs> How are you doing, Jean-Paul? I'm doing great. Thanks Fantastic. for having me back. Hey, yeah, it's nice to see you. It's been a while. So you have been at this uh, music game for quite some time. You're quite well known in the city of Thunder Bay and the region. Um, and you've been quite busy the last few years. You know, you've uh, had some pretty big life events. Yeah, so like music kind of took a backseat for a little bit there because I ended up, you know, doing, doing the, the big three, right? House, wife, kid. Not necessarily in that order, but yeah, yeah th those, those are kind of like the big three. You buy a house, you get married, you have a child, and uh, all three are off the list now, so back to, back to music making. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get into it a little bit later. We're going to touch on just kind of how your music uh, has evolved yeah, um, from the beginning into where you are now, because you have a new album coming out. Mm -hmm. um, but let's, uh, let's give our viewers a little bit of history. For the folks at home that don't know Jean-Paul very well, um, you were born in Thunder Bay, but That's you right. grew up overseas. Tell exactly. us about that. Yeah, so I grew up in, I, I was born here in Thunder Bay, McKellar Hospital, uh, and then was raised overseas, all kinds of places, Africa, Asia, South America, and uh, that took me pretty much from, you know, as soon as I was born until uh, grade 10, and then I came back to Sir Winston Churchill High School, which is now torn down. Yes. That's how old we're getting. Yeah. The schools <laughs> that we went to are being torn down, yep. uh, and then moved back in 2001, and I've been here since. And your style of music, I mean, I was trying to put my finger on one kind of genre, but you can't. <laughs> you can't. Then it works. <laughs> then it works. Because well, that's, that's one thing that I've always, I've always enjoyed varieties uh, of, of, of styles of music for my own purposes as well. And so each album is always kind of a, a mixture of a bunch of different things. But as we'll talk about later, I'm sure, uh, the, the next two records are much more focused. And I decided instead of having like a smorgasbord of different things, much like the market, uh, I wanted to make sure that each album had a more definite theme. So uh, the one that just came out in June is a folk album. So it's strictly acoustic guitar and, and voice as the primary instruments. And then the next one's coming out later uh, is going to be a bit different, but heavier, but much more definite and concrete in its theme as opposed to being like, here's a folk song, here's an acapella song, here's a rock song, here's a whatever. Tell us about that before we get into that one, because we'll talk. We will talk about your albums, sure, sure. and um, so I'm super interested in it. But <laughs> tell us about your voice. So your voice work that you do, I find that super interesting. That uh, voice looping. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so so I, I I've been known for 11 years now for doing this live looping thing where I use my voice, instruments, electronics, whatever it may be, and I'm recording these things live and then playing them back and then adding and stacking layer upon layer upon layer. Wow. And it's kind of it's grown in popularity massively over the last like you know, 15 years or so, I kind of got in at the ground level, but now there's there's festivals all over the world dedicated to this type of art form and everything else. And uh, it's just, it's something that was enabled the, enabling me to perform as, a, as one person on the road, wherever it may be. And it was a great opportunity for me to be able to showcase the music that I wanted to create in my head as one person on stage. How does that portray, like how does that go come across the audience? Like when they see you on stage doing that, <laughs> like what is that experience like? Well, I mean, I've had like wonderful feedback. Like people say like, like I had a sound guy walk on the stage and like, oh, I didn't realize you were here. I thought it was, it was a CD playing <laughs> because it's just a full band sound oh. without a full band being there. Yeah. So like, wonderful compliments like that. But it's also just a, it's a very different vibe. I mean, you don't have instrument like other musicians that kind of buddy up and like, okay, now we're going to extend this part an extra four bars to really rock out or anything like that. It's kind of, it's a bit more interesting because now you have complete creative control, which is very freeing but it's also not the same as interacting with other musicians. Gotcha, okay, well that's very <laughs> cool. So we're gonna head on inside. Um, let's, I'm gonna grab a coffee, what are you into? Oh, I want a juice. A juice, sorry, juice let's go sure. get some. So let's go check it out. Thanks, Jean Paul. Thank you. Thanks, man. Cool. down in Mexico to tell me that we would soon be a trio I just need a moment of silence sat down beside a fire hydrant I do anything 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 I wish we could make believe Standing, spinning, singing you to sleep 
there was no one else around as your cool became a meltdown i do anything 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 if i could hold you close every single day i never let you go i want you with me right here I'm always trying to be the best For those that I keep closest to my chest My peers don't understand me They try to reprimand me They just don't get that I do anything, anything If I could hold you close every single day I never let you go, I want you with me right here. To me you're everything, you're my sun and moon. I'd do anything, yeah I would do it for you. I would do anything. Oh, anything No, I won't be afraid Cause you're my everything in this world If I could hold you close every single day I'd never let you go To me you're everything You're my sun and moon I'd do anything, yeah, I would do it for you. I would do it for you. Have you ever had, do you enjoy kombucha? I haven't had it yet. I want to try it. I want to try it. Have you had it? Yes. Should we get some? We could get some. We could totally get some. Should we try it? I don't. I don't like it. But oh. I, if you want to try, if you if, if you want to go through the experience, I will go through the experience with you. Here, but uh... have you tried? You know what I've heard? The relish here is really good. This one. Where is it? Which, which one? Uh, I, haven't, I haven't tried any of these ones. It's uh, it's like a, it's called a, like a million dollar relish or something. That they had, and it's just it's million dollar relish. Maybe this oh, this one, yeah, one? million dollar relish. <laughs> so, I heard it's really good. If you're into relish, what, what makes it what makes it uh, worth a million dollars? Care and love the It's like a million dollars worth of love in there. Yeah. <laughs> Saving you from harm Love is like the laughs we shared when we were kids Picture perfect promises we vowed to keep Love is believing That everything's all right Love is forgiving Of every word said in a fight Love is like the 
laughs we shared when we were kids Picture perfect Promises we vowed to keep Movie moments Make the most of every day That's what love is we shared when we were kids picture perfect promises we vowed to keep movie moments make the most of every day that's what love is that's what love is Want to try some kombucha? <laughs> let's, let's do well, it. Why not, right? <laughs> I've never tried it before, so I'm super interested. I, I have, <laughs> but I've not tried <laughs> this one. Okay. All right. Yeah. Do you think we could try some kombucha? Mm, absolutely. I have some I'm excited. Uh, I have a couple flavors on top. Wild okay. blueberry and a ginger lemongrass. Wild blueberries? Those local blueberries? Mm -hmm. Ah, perfect. Should we try that one? Yeah. That's why not, good. right? Yeah. Thank you. I'll give that to Jean Paul. Okay, all right. There you go. Kombucha, all right. So, so what's the best method? Is it supposed to be like a. Do you sip or do you shoot? Or is it more, more of like a big. No, it's not a shooter, no. <laughs> it's not a sip and enjoy. It. It's a sip and enjoy? Yeah, all right. Good. Cheers. Cheers. Well, that's different. That is not what I was expecting at all. No, <laughs> I'm pleasantly surprised. Does it have vinegar in it or yeah, apple cider it's a vinegar? Yeah, occurring vinegars mm. are one of the health benefits to kombucha, the digestive enzyme, really good for your gut. Oh, that's actually quite delicious. Yeah, this is, this is I'm I, was, get I was expecting something that I was not going to enjoy. Some people but. think that a lot of homemade kombuchas, if you have them from a the friend's kitchen counter, are yes. like vinegar. Yeah. But I like to have a little sweetness to mine, so it's a more enjoyable drink. Perfect. Yeah, Excellent. Well, let's try some. Okay. Well, we made our way upstairs in the market. We're gonna have a nice little beverage. We're gonna Indeed. try this kombucha. I'm gonna have my smoothie. You picked up a smoothie, did you? Mm -hmm. mm. Refreshing. <laughs> it's different. If you've never tried kombucha, source it out from somewhere and try it. It's totally different. It is. But we're not here to talk about kombucha. Aren't we? We're here to talk about you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> we're here to talk about Jean-Paul de Rover and his musical talents, his musical stylings. Um, your latest album that just came out is called Love. It yeah. came out fairly recently. Yeah, June. The title, Love. You feel it's, it? It's warm and inviting. <laughs> is it because you got married, had a kid, bought a house? Is that where that's coming from? Uh, actually, <laughs> a lot of that is is yes. Um, because I was, as, as we talked about earlier, I, I was you know messing around with different styles and stuff like that, but I wanted to focus in on something, so I, I kind of dialed into like a, a folk singer-songwriter kind of vibe. And I've been writing all these songs in this style, and something that I've been struggling with for years was trying to write happy songs. Oh, okay. I, was, I was really good at writing melancholic sad, depressing material. Oh. Really good at it. Really? But there's been so much good happening <laughs> in my life the last while that I'm like, I should really write something that's reflective of what I'm going through. So I put myself to the challenge of writing positive music for a change. And so okay. even, even my positive music before, it had like a darker tinge mm. to it. Like it was like, it's a song about love, but then also the depression that comes with it. Right. So this was just about purely the positive side. So like the opening track, my heart and my head is literally my wife and I's wedding vows to one another. Aww. So, wow, so, that's sweet. So there's, 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 the, there's the marriage part, yeah. right? Uh, the second song is called I Do Anything, which is about our son. 
And then the third song is called I Can't Sleep, and it's kind of about uh, being away from the person that you love. And then I actually ended up rewriting it after our son was born because not sleeping takes on a different meaning after you've had a kid. <laughs> it sure does. I hear you know, you know a little bit about that. Yes, we have uh, kids <laughs> similar in age, so yes, definitely do. So was it hard for you when you were writing these songs? Like, did it, did it just come organically, or was it like, I have to uh, consciously think about writing a song about love? So, yes and no, because for myself, it's always interesting to write material about a theme. I, I like having something to work with. But I also had the benefit of not having timelines to worry about. So like, oh, I don't have to have the new album out in the next six months. So I've been collecting and working on things for a couple of years and then slowly seeing what sort of themes were, unf were unfolding. And that's how I was able to kind of dial into some of those things. So like, I was also working on the melancholic music as well, but that kind of got packaged into its own release for a later time, whereas this was like picking the best of these nuggets of gold that were fitting with the theme of love and then continuing to write in that style based on what was going on around me, whether it was like, there's a song called The Little Things that's just about appreciating everyday life Kind of, kind of in the spirit of like, what a wonderful world, yeah. that kind of thing. Uh, but you know, trying to find time to really enjoy that while you're a parent, self-employed, yeah. is is challenging. Yeah. Well, let's get into <laughs> that because you are a musician. Musicians mm -hmm. are no, and especially you, you've toured all over the world. Like you've gone on tour to quite some crazy places. So, sure. how do you do that whilst having uh, a little one at home? Like, it, it's, it's got to be hard being away, right? And then be like, hi, honey, I'll see you a couple months. Like. How does that work? Yeah, so like I don't I don't go on marathon tours anymore. Right. I used to be the guy that was out for you know, three months at a time, six months at a time, and just getting it done, right? But now I'm much more strategic, so I'll go out for like two weeks here, three months off, and then another two weeks here. I'm very strategic right. that way. That's, but that's nice. <laughs> before before our son turned one, he went on his first tour to Germany. Wow, cool. Yeah. That's <laughs> so, so like, cool. Just from zero to 100 immediately. We didn't, we didn't do like a Canadian tour, like no, no. We're going to Germany. We're going to tour yeah. there. So that was that was my third time in Germany. First time I went with Shannon, my wife. Second time I went alone because she was pregnant. And the third time we went back, we had we brought the whole family oh, and my mom with us circle. as well. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but it was cool because I was doing a lot more house concert type shows, which is kind of what inspired me to do more on the acoustic side and put out an album worth of songs that are in that singer songwriter kind of vein that fits the love theme. So it all kind of has been adding to one another. And is that important to you um, now that you have your, your little guy to get him into music too? Or are you just kind of letting him, you know, he's two and a half, so yeah. you know. Oh no, he, he gives concerts. Oh cool. He will set up with his, his guitar, his ukulele, yeah. uh, in the living room. And he'll have like, uh, you know, like a, a little stand for <laughs> hanging, uh, what do you call it, like brooms and brushes and yep. stuff like that. He'll set that up in the middle of the room. And then that's his microphone stand. And then he'll he'll strum away and play some songs. Even earlier than that, like that's two and a half. Let's, he's giving concerts now. He'll, he'll this song is about, and then plays a song. Yeah, <laughs> like wow. he knows how to introduce Crazy. songs. Uh, but he also, when he was much younger, his first musical instrument was a harmonica that I gave him. Oh boy! And he would have to stand on a table to play it because he needed a stage. Oh wow! It's in his blood. It's yeah. in his DNA. He's and wow. he's going to be an entertainer. <laughs> And, uh, and his mom's a photographer, so perfect. He, his, his, <laughs> his childhood will be well documented. Well documented. <laughs> so let's get into that a little bit. Uh, in terms of uh, you um, being a performer, how do you keep, what's the best way to put this? Like, how do you keep wanting to do it? And how do you measure success? So how, does, how do you go about saying that I, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, I'm going to keep um, following my musical path? How do you measure if you're being successful or not? That is an incredibly great question because the, the fact is that like, the, rea the reality of being a musician is that most musicians have to have, you know, they work at a restaurant, they work at a bar, they do something else, they do construction yeah. during the day. Like there's all yeah. kinds of things where musicians have to find other ways to pay the bills. Yeah. They have a spouse that can, you know, carry the load as yeah. well. But uh, myself and my wife, we've been very fortunate that we're both self-employed we both work in our particular fields, photography for her and music for myself, and this is our living that we that we yeah. eke out now. Yeah. And so that is it's very difficult because having a kid, you know, we can't go on the road all the time. Right. So that means that the money that you might be making from playing shows every night is not there anymore. Right. So 
for myself, it was a bit of a change in direction, still within music and my, in my areas of expertise, but a definite shift. So instead of performing live, and that being my sort of my main source of revenue, I have now shifted into a bit more behind the scenes work. So I do, uh, I run my studio blueprints, and that's been paying the bills for the most part because I get to stay home, uh, so I can meet with my family whenever I want to. Uh, but I also get to work on projects with other musicians. I get to compose for film and TV. I get to mix. Uh, I get to produce. I get to do all kinds of things. So I'm still in the musical sphere yep. and working as full time as a musician or something related to audio and music. But it may not be like the creative world is full of compromises. It is, yeah. Right? So I may not be, you know, playing, putting on shows six nights a week, touring all over the world anymore. And I, I still will do that in my, in my you know, strategic pockets, like I yeah. talked about. But the big thing right now is just to be able to find ways to make it sustainable. And you, your priorities change as you have another life form that depends on you. Totally. <laughs> yeah. So all of a sudden, like, instead of being like, oh, I'm, I'm just going to go you know, take off for six months and where, wherever life takes me to play music or whatever it is, yeah. that'll be great. Yeah. No, you have to all of a sudden now pay attention to, okay, well, I got to be back before nine because that's bedtime. Yeah, <laughs> swimming lessons and soccer lessons, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, that's crazy. So um, we're going to wrap up shortly. Um, but first of all, I want to tease a little bit your next album that's coming out because it's totally different. <laughs> totally great. different. Yeah. So the one that came out first was Love. Yeah. And actually, we shot the album cover for both of these albums right behind us, just cool. over there. A little tie-in. Yeah, it's wonderful because we, we wanted a place with fantastic floors and this place has these fantastic floors. It does, yeah. So we ended up uh, shooting the album covers here, but there are two albums that are meant to go together. Okay. So we talked about Love and how it's a singer-songwriter, yep. sort of folky vibe. The next one is more, I want to say metal. Metal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's definitely a heavier <laughs> alternative sort of rock what? sort of thing, but it, it does get Stay really tuned. heavy. Yeah. yeah it okay. does get really We're heavy. We're going to leave it at that because I think... Uh, I think that's super intriguing. And if uh, you've li listened to Jean-Paul's music before, metal is not how I would describe it. So right on. Thanks so much, Jean-Paul. It's a pleasure seeing you. Thanks again. It's always a pleasure getting to chat with you. And, you too. Uh, thanks for being uh, one of our guests on Wire for Sound. Uh, it's back. So if you're interested in being on the show or if you know somebody that should be on the show, hit us up on our social network and uh, we'd love to have you. Nothing could have prepared me for this moment, but I'm glad nothing did. We've had incredible adventures so far, with a lot more to come. A friend saying it all means nothing. When you're not here And it's true I wouldn't be who I am today If it wasn't for you So from the first time I said it Until the last chance I get I will love you with my heart and my head Laughter, love, and commitment. What else could we need? A lifetime of smiling for us before we go to sleep. They say that no one is perfect. But to me you are And I know from now Till my dying day I want to be yours So from the first time I said it Until the last chance I get I will love you with my heart and my head So from the first time I said it until the last chance I get, I will love you with my heart and my head.
So from the first time I said it to the last chance I get, I will love you with my heart and my head. So from the first time I said it until the last chance I get, I will love you with my heart and my head. Oh!